Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I will be showing you how to get notifications from your smart home. So, I've done videos on installing Home Assistant, installing Scripted, installing all these different services that your home becomes more reliant on and needing. And what happens when those services go down? You want to have a notification, you want to be alerted exactly when they go down. And this video today is about learning how to do that and getting started. So a little bit about this series, it's home automation, and we're gonna go over from starting a, a smart home from scratch, going from installing all the software to eventually getting to the automations. I have about uh, over 800 devices, almost 900 devices in my home, and we keep on adding more and more. And uh, today I'm going, be showing you one piece of necessity that I have in my home to know when things go down. So stay tuned. So I'm going to walk you through installing Uptime Kuma on Proxmox. And I'm going to start you out at the GitHub page. And um, it's just Uptime Kuma and the author's name. And you can see why it looks. It looks really nice. Um, monitoring uptime. It does HTTPS and HTTP, uh, TCP, HTTPS, keywords, ping, DNS record, push, Steam game server, and Docker containers. Um, notifications to where it'll, it'll give you a notification when something's down. 90 plus notification services, so it supports a lot. Multi languages, status pages, ping charts, certificate info, proxy support, and two factor authentication. You can install it quickly with the uh, Docker run and um, get through it on 3001. Okay, now I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to go over here to Proxmox V helper scripts. You're going to just type in your uptime and then you see it. But before we get to installing it uh, on this, um, I urge you to go over here to the uh, Proxmox V helper scripts. You can look at the scripts that's running in the background. You can see what it's creating, storage, um, build, create, install. That's what the author recommends you looking at. You can also go over here. It's open source. So you can go over here and look exactly what it's doing but with all these files. Default settings, update script, build the container, and then you can go over here to install script. This is what we will be running, um, uptime Kuma. Okay, you can see that it's setting up the container, it's updating the operating system, installing the dependencies, curl, sudo, mc, git, uh, node.js, it's getting it from node source, so that's the correct one. Installing uh, version 18. It's now installing it through app git. Um, installing uptime Kuma from the real repository right here. And it's creating the service. Um, doing the service, install, and then setting up the SSH, um, app git, and auto clean. So it looks pretty simple on what it does. But you can go through here, you can look at all these files, you can see what you're exactly doing, and I would recommend you doing that. Um, so let's get to installing it. Like I said, search box up here, uptime, then you'll see uptime kuma xc. Um, you're going to just copy this right here. The default settings are one gigabytes of RAM, two gigabytes of storage, and one vCPU. Okay, now I'm going to go over to Proxmox. You're going to go in your node, then your shell, uh, and then you're going to just paste what you copied over there, and you're going to press return or enter. It's going to say you're going to create a new uptime kuma it's lxe um, so it's going to ask you if you want to use the default settings i'm going to say yes it's going through it it's installing debian um i log in for gigabytes of hard disk space 
DHCP, uh, I would recommend setting a static IP. Uh, it's all on your router. Um, resolving GitHub connected. Updating the container operating system like we saw over in those files over in GitHub. Installing the dependencies now. Setting up node.js. Installing it now. That's installing the main uptime Kuma. Creating the service, it's cleaning it, and now it says that it set this IP and this uh, port. We're gonna just go over here, create a new tab. I'm gonna go here and I'll allow it through no script. And here you see the uptime Kuma, it's gonna create an admin account. Big bear. Put a simple password and then you're going to create the create button to pa password two week. Let me see if I can get past this. Yep, okay. Past it. Okay. Um, so you can see over here you have maintenance. You can set scheduled maintenance. You can set the time zone, allow indexing, primary base URL. Um, set the appearance you can set up all the notifications that you want on the destinations um, supports all these home assistant <laughs> um i think discord's here somewhere uh Oh, there it is. Okay, missed it completely. Okay, you can just put in your Discord web, a webhook URL, um, your bot display name, uh, your prefix, uh, a custom message, and then you can go down here and test it. Um, you can set up a reverse proxy through Cloudflare uh, Tunnel. Um, you can download it from here. Pretty nice service. Then you can set up tags, the monitor history, set up Docker host, security, you can change your current password, and set up two factor authentication. You can get API keys, set up a proxy. Um, they don't recommend using this because it's a bit unmaintained on the backup solution. Kind of weird because I really like to do backups and, hmm. but uh, you can see that we're on 1.21.3 version. You might be on a different version, but we're gonna go back to the home page. You can see up, down, maintenance, unknown polls. And um, I'm gonna just add real quick. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see real quick. Let's go over to Add Guard, and I'm gonna go. Uh, so just copy this here. And I'm gonna go to then that was that's eight thousand six. I'm just ping the prox mox to show you. Um, ping it every sixty seconds. You can set tags, max redirect, scat 
really good settings. Well, oops, I bit keyword accidentally. Um, so six. Okay, now it's pinging it. You can see it's up. You're getting um. You're going to be getting a graph down here to show that it's up, average ping time, up time, and if anything happens with this, uh, it will um, just say it's down. Um, I'm going to just go and show you. So I'll we'll just go and just do a random one. I think that this one's not port. I'll uh, just do um, port 80. Okay. Um, we'll just do one to show you. See, it's showing it's not found. So it it gives you a thing saying it's pending. And you can see that it's actually pinning this every 60 seconds so it's going to add up here it's going to show you the ping time average is one millisecond since we're on local up time we'll just go over here and just do a another one you can do outside your network too go and do keeper tech world and then i'm going to you should have to ignore the SSL because it's got SSL. Um, so I'm going to save. You can see that it's pinging bigbrotechworld.com and 154 millisecond response time. And now it's now said that that's down. It's now not pending, it's down now. So whenever a service goes down, you're going to see that it's down right here and it's going to uh, notify you in your your notifications once you set these up. So it's a pretty nice service and um, works really good. You can see uh, you can also go in here and you can change the interval like I want to do 30 seconds. Just go back here. You can see 151 milliseconds average response time, then 128 milliseconds is response current time, and then the certificate is 205 days. The uptime, it keeps up with certificates, but it's really nice too. Um, I think in here uh, you can change the headers, the body, the HTTP options. Um, you can also do authentication if you need to. You can change the acceptance status codes. Um, you can get a uh, a notification when the certificate ticks and expire. You can say max redirects where the maximum redirects you allow to happen. You can also say resend notification if down x times continuously, and you can pick that. Um, you can change your retries to where if it's down, you want to know, uh, you want to know, uh, you want to track one more time before your market is down. So one try before your market is down, you can change this to 10 tries before you think it's down. There's a lot of flexibility you can do. Um, let's go over here, add new monitor. You can do Steam game server, game dig, MQT. Push, Docker container, DNS. You can keep up with DNS resolver servers like 1.1.1.1 and on port 53, normal. Keep up with GRPCs, uh, HTTPS's, TCP port, like we've already done, HTTPS. You can keep up with Redis servers. Really nice if you have a local Redis server. Um, MongoDB, you can also do remotely too. Um, Postgres, Microsoft SQL, it's got about everything you need really. 
Um, this is a really nice service that I use to keep up with everything that I have in the house. And you can see it keeps up with ups, two, two currently up, and then one down. And then you can put it in maintenance too. And then unknown status and then pause. And then you can have these status pages up here. You can create a status page like testing. I'm going to say testing. Then next. And you can create incidents. You can add groups of services. Um, change that. Uh, let's see. Let's do Paper Tech World up there. Let's do I'm down right here. And Proxmox. You can see it's partially integrated service. You can move these up and down. You can also remove this. All systems operational now. You can create an incident. You can say the so services are down. You can unpin this. You can edit it. You can say danger and change the colors. You can also do custom CSS. You can do Google Analytics to track the analytics who's going here. You can add a domain name. Um, you can show tags. You can put, put a footer text in. So, and then you can see the UI being done here. You can go and um, let's see, you know, just put I'm down back in. I'm going to just save changes down here. And then you can see partially degraded server, and this is what it looks like. The uh, URL for this is status and then testing. So, and you can change the slug up here. Um, save. Then now the URL's changed. It's now one, two, three, the end. You can go back to dashboard. So you can see it's adding up now in the downtime. And you can see it's up here. You can see that that one's up. So or remotely and local. So I can keep up with all those. Um, that's about it. And I really hope this helps your home and uh, for you to keep the status of the home. So today I just showed you how to make your smart home even smarter with uh, knowing what's down and if everything's up correctly, getting status updates on your home, um, getting notifications from your home, and um, it just makes it to where you can keep an eye on everything, all the services, and you can get uh, status pages to where you can keep uh, track of certain components. Um, this series is about creating a smart home from scratch, going over the install process, then getting into the home automation side of things. And uh, if you like this series, subscribe, like, comment, and if you need any help, comment down below. Thank you.